Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Plays and Fades Week 11 edition. So let's get right into it with the quarterback that we like this week, Derek Carr. According to Vegas, this is the highest projected game total at 54 and a half points. This game is being played in Mexico City, high altitude, and the Raiders played there last year on Monday Night Football against the Texans. I love the price on Derek Carr over here. He sprinkled around a lot of guys that I think are going to be popular this week. True Breeze at home always garners a lot of ownership. Jared Goff, who is coming off two monster games. And Alex Smith, who I think is going to be chalked this week. You get Derek Carr in a favorable matchup where the Patriots are 30th against the pass. And you're going to see him at a very low ownership. He's a tremendous tournament play this week. Next up, one of the running backs I like this week, Kareem Hunt. Let's face it, as a Giants fan, I don't even watch the games anymore because the entire team has thrown the flag. And they're one of the worst teams at defending running backs. Kareem Hunt hasn't scored a touchdown in six straight games. And I think when people pull up the game log, they're going to see no touchdowns. 8,600 on FanDuel. I don't think a lot of people are going to play them. The matchup is great and they're a 10 point favorite on the road. I think you're going to see a lot of Kareem Hunt in this game. Next up, the other running back I really like this week. Melly G. Melvin Gordon is coming off a dud last week against the Jacksonville Jaguars. He has a great matchup now at home against the Buffalo Bills, who Buffalo has allowed over 400 yards rushing in their last two games since getting rid of Marcel Darius. Melvin Gordon let a lot of people down last week. And if you follow the trend, anytime someone duds, the next week nobody plays them. There's a good bounce back spot for Melvin Gordon. Staying with the San Diego Chargers, that's wrong because of the LA Chargers now is the wide receiver that I like this week, Keenan Allen. This is strictly a price play, more so on DraftKings where he's ridiculously underpriced at 5,900, but even on FanDuel, he is clearly Phillip Rivers' guy. Hunter Henry has fallen off the map. And in a game where I think that both Melvin Gordon and Keenan Allen can get going, this is a good spot for both of these guys. And Keenan Allen as a number one receiver out there lining up in the slot 65% of the time. Buffalo is one of the worst team at defending slot wide receivers. So I can see a nice bounce back for Keenan Allen also. Staying with the theme of the bounce back, I'm going to the other wide receiver that I like this week, Mike Evans. Last couple of weeks for Mike Evans. Suspended, should have been thrown out of the game against the Saints, but he was held to two catches. And his game log isn't that pretty. I think nobody's gonna play Mike Evans this week because Ryan Fitzpatrick is his quarterback. No Winston, people just assume the wide receivers aren't gonna eat, but I think they're gonna be wrong. Miami against opposing number one receivers are 26 in DVOA. This is a great spot for Mike Evans. Next up, the last receiver that I really like this week, Brandon Cooks. Brandon Cooks last week in a tough matchup against the Denver Broncos, saw 11 targets without Chris Hogan, who's expected to be out this week. Oakland is one of the worst teams at defending wide receivers this year. Have yet to record an interception, those defensive backs. No Chris Hogan again, as we mentioned, and Amendola being pretty much a hit away from being out for the rest of the game. I really like Brandon Cooks here in a spot where I think he's gonna go under-owned. Next up, the tight end position. If you've been following the trend, we pick on the New York Giants, any tight end that they're playing has scored a touchdown this year. Travis Kelsey. The Giants have given up a touchdown to a tight end every single game this year. And now you get probably the best tight end in football, in my opinion at least, coming into town. We know about the Chiefs and Andy Reid, anytime they come off a bye week, how successful they are. I think they're gonna game plan to get both Kareem Hunt and Kelsey involved in this game. I love Kelsey, great spot. A little high price tag might scare people off. No one likes paying up for tight end, but get Kelsey in your lineup this week. Last but not least, the defenses that I like this week, the Houston Texans and the Arizona Cardinals. I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. I think both teams are underpriced considering who the quarterbacks are gonna be this week for both particular sides. Tom Savage is the quarterback for the Texans. The Cardinals are throwing out Blaine Gabbert. Dumb and dumber, so pick and choose whoever you want. Arizona or the Texans, I like both. I'd lean to the Cardinals because they have more playmakers out there, Tyron Matthew and Patrick Peterson and Chandler Jones, maybe a strip sack, fumble return. But for the most part, both, both defenses are in play. We're gonna switch gears here and move on over to the fade section. Quarterback we're fading this week, Jared Goff. The Rams are going to play Minnesota on the road. The Vikings this year, their defensive stats are inflated when they play at home. Much better team defensively at home. And also I've noticed something about Jared Goff. So in the five games he's played this year against teams ranked in the top half in defensive statistics, he's averaging 12.4 FanDuel points per game. If you look at the four games that he's played against the bottom half of those teams, he's averaging 19.8 FanDuel points per game. What does that tell you? 
Jared Goff is not yet matchup proof. His matchup dictates whether or not you should play him. And this week, going up against Minnesota, I'm staying away from that entire Rams offense. Both of these guys are priced in the same tier. Much rather lean to Derek Carr. Next up, the running back that I'm fading this week, Leonard Fournette. Leonard Fournette, this entire year, his numbers are a little inflated because of three long runs that he's broken. My biggest issue with Leonard Fournette is not that the guy isn't talented. The Cleveland Browns are actually one of the best run defenses in all of football. According to DVOA, Cleveland is the number two defense against the run. And Fournette's price is 9,300 on FanDuel. Delete, not playing them. Next up, the wide receiver that I'm fading this week, Robert Woods. Robert Woods, Four touchdowns in his last two weeks. All season, he's been Goff's number one guy. He's seen seven targets in every single game this year. But now he's going to face Minnesota. And in particular, he's going to be shadowed by Xavier Rhodes. According to PFF, Pro Football Focus, he's the number three corner in man coverage this year. I'd much rather look at Sammy Watkins if you want any exposure of this Rams offense, who's probably going to be seeing Trey Waynes and Terrence Newman. Moving on over to tight end. And not that I think this guy is going to dud. I just think that his price has gotten to a point where you really need to consider it. Evan Ingram. If you want to get to Evan Ingram at 7400 on FanDuel, why not find $100 more to get to Kelsey? Despite losing Eric Berry earlier in the year, Kansas City is not one of the worst teams at defending opposing tight ends. They rank 10th in DVOA at man coverage on tight ends. And the Giants offense is pretty predictable. It's Sterling Shepard and Evan Ingram. Combined, they're seeing 75% of the target market share in that offense. Based off volume, I can see why you would play Ingram. But for the most part, if I'm paying 7,400 for Ingram, downgrade a kicker, the defenses are pretty cheap, and get Kelsey in your lineup. Last but not least, the defense I'm fading this week, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Their price on FanDuel is absurd, 5,600. It's way too much money to pay for a defense who say they don't get any sacks or any turnovers, and Cleveland scores one touchdown. You're down to four points. Take the Cardinals defense at 4,600. Save yourself $1,000 in salary. I think both teams provide the same upside, and you get this discount with the Cardinals. I'd much rather upgrade elsewhere. So there you have it, the Plays and Fades Week 11 edition. If you wanna follow me, LamVM10 on all social media. Degeneration Bets is the name of the DFS podcast that I put out every Fridays, DFS Fridays. A deeper dive into my plays and fades on that podcast. Link is in the bio below. Thank you for listening. Thumbs up if you like the video, and I'll see you next week.